before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. The world I don't want to set the world on fire. <laughs> Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today in Pub Stomp MTG and in this video today Oh, hey spider. How's it going? Sorry about that. Uh, so today I'm gonna be going over Caesar Legion Emperor And honestly, this is a pretty sweet commander out of the Fallout set It was one of my favorites out of the whole entire set and I feel like if you were to build one commander This would absolutely be it. It has a lot of things going for it It does have a little bit of aristocrats payoff It also does have the ability to make more tokens on the battlefield and could be a win con too So before diving into the deck, let's talk about Caesar and talk about the abilities that he does have So for one red white and a black he's a legendary creature human soldier Whenever you do attack, so that's whenever any creature does attack, you don't have to just attack with Caesar. You can just let a 1-1 one, one attack and not have to worry about Caesar dying to combat damage. You may sacrifice another creature. When you do, you choose to create two 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature tokens with haste and that are tapped and attacking. Or you could draw a card and lose one life. Or you could deal damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control to target opponent. So honestly, this is pretty wide open. And that's what I do like about this is the fact that you can play an aristocrat strategy. You can play a go wide strategy. You can actually go with a lot of damage doublers for that third ability but i wouldn't recommend it i would really focus on those first two abilities so i am kind of switching up the format of my deck techs i do want to showcase the full entire deck as you can see here i am on mox field in my normal kind of deck techs i would kind of do like a slideshow of different kind of cards and if you do like those and you do prefer those over uh this let me know down below in the comments and i'd be happy to kind of take your uh, opinions and feedback and kind of try to mix them together because i really like showing the full entire deck list and just kind of saying okay what's good in here and what could be debatable and having it in the deck and plus i can explain more of the reason why i choose some of the selections i do have because I will only go over maybe about 15, 20 cards that are in the deck on the video. But on this, you can see the whole entire deck. But again, if you do prefer the slideshow option, I may just consider doing both as one. You have seen that a little bit with uh, my pre-con upgrades like Caesar's Legion's Emperor with the Hail Caesar deck. But regardless of that, let's get into the deck tech. Let's talk about uh, the creature package. So there is 28 creatures in this deck. Of course, we want to sacrifice a lot of creatures to get a lot of value out of Caesar. So cards like like Adeline is going to get you a token on attack. Same with Anna Pakal, Thousandth Moon. And I can't tell you how many times I lose to this card in uh, MTG Arena Brawl. It's kind of ridiculous, especially the more you do snowball with counters. Also just buffing her up and swinging away with a lot of gnomes. It's just, I hate playing against it, but it can be a very good card in this deck specifically. Charismatic Conqueror, it is kind of expensive, but I do feel like it's a great sax effect. It's either your opponents will have to have their stuff enter the battlefield tapped, or you make a 1-1. One, one. And usually a lot of people will focus on having their stuff become untapped because they want to either have a blocker or use that soul ring right away. Lagamos is another great option, uh, mainly because you could constantly make that elemental so that you could just sacrifice it right away to Caesar. And if you somehow sacrifice five creatures, you could just use that as a tutor when you do tap it. Morel Shield of Argive is very similar uh, to Anna Pakal. The more you do have of creatures on the battlefield, the more you can't swing in with it. Of course, it's all based off of soldiers, and plus it does have that Grand Abolisher effect, so that's a very good and of course caesar is making soldiers so obviously this is just a match made in heaven uh just making sure that you can make more soldiers on the battlefield so you can swing in with a lot more ahead of time and i didn't go too heavy with the token doubling in this deck specifically i feel like in a way you don't need to because you have 28 creatures you could sacrifice a lot of them for value but i did have some creatures that you can use as sacrifice outlets so for example i did have braids this is a great card draw option a lot of people might not want to sacrifice the permanence on the battlefield so potentially you can get three card draws and make everybody lose two life at the beginning of your end step and plus braids has some amazing art come on it's just pretty wild i love the art so much commissar uh, is a great option as well you can focus on attacking with all your tokens 
make everybody lose X life, depending on the amount of creatures you do have attacking. And plus it can be a sacrifice outlet for two mana so that you can gain two life and draw a card. Honestly, what's better than drawing cards? I don't think anything. And Erebos the Bleak Hearted is another great option for a sacrifice outlet. Honestly, if you wanted to switch this with Yawgmoth, you're more than welcome to. Erebos is more of a cheaper option because Yawgmoth is pretty much doing what Erebos is doing, but so much better. He does exactly what I do, but better. Oh, Exodus uh, Auric Overlord is okay. I mean, you are running about 16 instant and sorcery spells, so you can get that Magecraft trigger, but you really want to be playing it for the backside so that essentially if you have like a lot of creatures on the battlefield, you could just sacrifice them all to awaken the blood avatar and then make an avatar on the battlefield, make everybody sacrifice a creature and then deal some damage to each opponent. So obviously this could be a great card in the deck as well. But I would say if anything else, uh, this deck has a lot of payoffs for you having your creatures die or get sacrificed uh, of course there's the blood artist packages uh, that you make people uh, lose life and you gain life like blood artist uh, cruel celebrant uh, Zula poor cutthroat and there's probably another one around here I'm just trying to remember mayhem devil is another great one too because you can just ping anybody whenever any player sacrifices a permanent so if a lot of people have treasure tokens well you're gonna make them uh, get a lot of damage a lasso core is another great one because whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control you gain one life and when uh, another creature you control dies each opponent loses one life so again the very uh very similar thing with all the other blood artist effects i honestly love vein ripper so much it's kind of unfortunate that it just skyrocketed in price luckily i got my copy for like i want to say 16 dollars and that mystery frame where they have like the hidden detail on it i'm trying to remember what it's called i'm glad i picked it up because i was going to use it for an aristocrat strategy so of course this is a great uh, option it's definitely like the ronnie coleman of yeah buddy hey wait of all blood artist effects. Mirkwood Bats is another great one because you're making tokens all the time with Caesar. You're going to be draining a lot of people and you can sacrifice those tokens to make people uh, lose a lot more life too. I do have three different Planeswalkers in this list to Vesh Zot. If you aren't a sacrifice theme, honestly, this is one of the best cards you can be playing, at least in my opinion. Making two thralls that you can sacrifice, all the while having a Skull Clamp for that plus one and then potentially have a game winning uh, at minus 10 where you could just take control of everybody's commander, whether they're in the command zone or on the battlefield honestly i love to vest that i love playing it as a commander liliana because we're sacrificing a lot of creatures that first mode of whenever a creature control dies you draw a card is just gravy honestly like it didn't have to have that but it does and it has all those extra abilities of making a token making each player sacrifice two creatures and making everybody sacrifice a lot more stuff with that minus nine ability kaya i really i feel like could be pretty debatable on here i don't think you necessarily need it but it does have a good plus one if you are going in that aggressive strategy by giving all creatures death touch until end of turn also the main reason why i do have it on this list is for that minus two ability basically being a token doubler i will say uh this deck is pretty light on the instant and sorcery spells normally i will have a lot more uh, removal uh mainly because i feel like you want to answer threats in the right type of way but again if you're an aristocrat strategy you can go with a lot more creatures so that you can get them for value so you can kind of change this up as you'd like i do have your normal kind of removal spells uh also like deadly disputes village rights to just sacrifice to draw more cards uh teferi's protection just to protect all your stuff including your tokens plump the forbidden is heavily underrated in my opinion especially if you are swinging with Anim Pakal, you have so much uh, tokens on the battlefield you could just sacrifice to draw a full grip of hand, honestly. Seriously, give it a shot. It's one of the best cards you can be playing in an aristocrat strategy. Ink Shield, I mainly uh, did this for the memory of uh, Sheldon Menory. I'm going to switch the printing, actually. Honestly, it's a great card in this deck, especially because you are going an aggressive strategy. You want to swing in all the time so that you can get value, whether with Caesar or any of your other aristocrat payoffs. And you are going to be wide open in most instances, so having a backup like Ink Shield and getting more tokens on the battlefield can be pretty brilliant. Of course, then you have a lot of removal spells too so again not a whole lot in the package uh of course i did add a lot of different uh board wipes in the deck too runa's ultimatum mainly because of the caesar art and also it could really swing the tide into your favor same with white sun's twilight especially the more you do pay into the more uh, tokens that you can be putting on the battlefield artifact package uh most of them are mana rocks or some ways to sacrifice creatures like phyrexian altar and skull clamp are great options just to sacrifice creatures to get some kind of value golden throne can be in the same way it can protect us from a big giant crater hoof behemoth swing i mean we 
will have one life left and to try to get an extra turn to win the game potentially. Lightning Greaves is mainly just to protect Caesar and if we do want to swing in with another creature we could just make sure we get it haste. And so again uh, your typical kind of artifacts you would see in a lot of different aristocrat strategies. Bastion of Remembrance is basically another Zulapur Cutthroat uh, Blood Artist kind of effect. It does make a token on the battlefield. Bitter Blossom is just a way where we could just put creatures on the battlefield uh, consistently each turn. I'm kind of debating on taking it out because honestly I don't think it's that great. Dictate of Erebos and Grave Pact are pretty nutty in this deck. Once in the box. Pain. Of course because you have a lot of cards that you're swinging in with with caesar you could get that attack trigger sacrifice a creature make everybody sacrifice a creature with one of these effects and so you could definitely have the board clear away when you do swing in with your huge giant army war leader's call is a really good one in here i don't have uh, the other one like peripheros or impact tremors you're more than welcome to add it I just focus on this one because it does give a buff to all our creatures and can act as an impact trimmers. But again, if you wanted to go for more of those other options, you're more than welcome to. And of course with uh, lands, uh, the thing about lands is they're really dependent on how much you want to spend on them. Uh, to name a couple that are pretty good in this is Hall of the Bandit Lord, just to give a creature haste. Minas Tirith so that you can get some card draw because most likely you are going to be swinging with two or more creatures. Phyrexian Altar, just to sacrifice outlet to uh, just add more mana. Vault of the Arcane Angel is another one that gives you uh, creatures you control, death touch, and life leak until end of turn. So that's a great way of just swinging in, getting a lot of life, especially because Caesar and a lot of these cards do have that ability of you lose one life, draw a card, or you lose one life, do this kind of thing. And so Having those abilities to get lifelink just to recoup some of the life you lost is pretty great. Care Keep is just a way where we could just put a token on the battlefield if we really have nothing else to do. If we want to swing in with Caesars so that we could sacrifice that token, we could get some card draw so that we could kind of replenish our hand a little bit and make more tokens along the way. But really, uh, you could kind of go wherever you want with the lands. You could go a lot cheaper. You could go a lot more expensive. Of course, you could add the fetch lands to really uh, dive into it. But of course, this is just the standard uh, land package that I will put in usually most of my deck techs. So that is mainly it. This is my Little Caesar Slices and Sticks. Little Caesar Slices and Sticks is the world's greatest combination. As you can see, uh, Little Caesars, I actually just had it today. That's why I made it this. <laughs> I don't know why. It's, oh, I need to make a deck tech for Little Caesars. I'm like, oh, there you go. It's Little Caesars. That's what it's called. And the Slices and Sticks because you're slicing away your opponent's life totals with the uh, Zulapur Cutthroat effects. So this is my Caesar Legion's Emperor deck tech. Again, let me know down below if you like this template a little bit more than uh, the slideshow option. If you want me to do a bit of both, uh, I definitely can. I just wanted to change things around and just kind of show you my thought process a little bit more roughly compared to more of a presentation. And with all that said, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And without out of the way, thank you for stomping by.